Hey everyone, it's Wilmer from the Game Academy. In this episode, I thought we would change things up a little bit and keep things light. There's a spring mega sale going on at the Unity Asset Store, so I wanted to highlight some assets that might help you on your game dev adventures. Everything from spaceships to sound effects to procedural worlds, you can probably find it right here on the Asset Store. This is the annual spring mega sale. 500 of the most popular assets are 50% off. Okay, now truth be told, we get a small commission every time you make a purchase from the affiliate links in the description. It's a great way to support the channel without costing you anything extra. If you're a programmer and you really need some art to complete your game, the asset store is the place to find it. It's not the end all and be all, but because the store is so tightly integrated with the editor, it's just easy to incorporate everything into your projects. If you're more of an artist and you need programming help, then there's plenty of stuff out there as well. And seriously, a few assets, you can just swap out your own visuals and sounds and pretty much you have a total conversion that is ready to be made into its own unique game. Now, I certainly understand a lot of engineers or artists have this, we have to build everything ourselves attitude. And I agree with it to a certain extent, just don't buy code or art blindly. But as someone who's been at a larger studio and now is flying solo, more or less, having the asset store feels like you have more resources at your disposal. It helps connect you with those other teams of artists or programmers virtually. For example, I used to be able to walk down the hall to another department to request a 3D model if I needed help. Nowadays, I need to go into Maya and build that myself. Or I could save myself a little bit of time and see if somebody else already has something that might work. You could always customize art or code or anything else that you download and make it your own. So in that respect, it's pretty great. With 50,000 plus assets on the store, not everything is a gem. So I thought I would do a quick review of a few of the more popular assets that I'm familiar with. Anyway, we'll start with a bunch of assets from Cinti Studios. All of the assets feature a low poly art style. And even though it's low poly, it still looks great and everything renders super quickly. So they work well for lower end platforms like VR or mobile, but they also can make for a stylized PC or console game. Cinti has a bunch of other themed assets available if you want to build a spaceship or a small city or medieval dungeon or go back to feudal Japan. They have a bunch of nice looking assets that fit the bill, as long as you're going for that signature low poly art style. For those of you who want a more complete project and just want to add some 3D assets and call it a day, I definitely recommend that you check out the packs from More Mountains. It's mostly a single developer in Montreal, and he has these awesome complete projects where you can build a top-down shooter, a platform game, or a racing game. The Corgi engine features this 2D, 2.5D cartoon dog character in the demo scene. That's why it's called the Corgi engine. It has simple AI, mobile controls, and it's pretty incredible how much stuff this guy has jammed into these packs. Now, I realize that Unity has their own 2D and 3D game kits, though they do overlap in some respects, I think it's great to look at different approaches to the same problem. So these are definitely worth the entrance fee. And both the Corgi engine and the top-down engine have some nice features, whether you wanna use them straight away or just wanna learn from them and then build your own from that. If you're more interested in 3D first-person shooters, you have a couple of options. UFPS or Ultimate FPS by Opsiv has been around for a few years, since 2012, I think. It's regarded as a comprehensive first person shooter solution. Though Unity offers a micro FPS learn project, UFPS really is amazingly feature rich. Again, this is nearly a complete project. You just have to add your own custom levels, weapons, sounds, and animations, and you're good to go. Now, if you want to go more third-person controller, then I suggest you take a look at Invector's third-person shooter template. This is one of the best third-person controllers on the Asset Store, and this one includes the basic locomotion template and the melee combat template, as well as the shooting stuff. Now, it's really just a staggering amount of work that they put into this. So you do some basic setup, add some 3D models, and you're ready to go in guns blazing. Some of you know that I teach this lighting and shading course, so I'm always interested in making our games look better. Now, this is more of a one-off effect, but if you're looking for something like this to make your 3D objects dissolve, then check out the Advanced Dissolve Shader. 
While making a simple version of the shader is pretty easy with Shader Graph, kudos to the developer for making these nice controls to tweak the effect. Again, this is a one-trick pony, but probably you can find some use for it somewhere in your game. Now, even if you don't end up using it, I just like watching my 3D models disintegrate. Also related to shading is the flat kit, cell, and tune shading package. If you're building a game with non-photorealistic rendering, something akin to Firewatch or Lies Beneath, and you like that tune shaded look, you can make some really beautiful stuff with it. Here are some samples. I made my own toon shader a while ago, but it's not nearly as good as this. Now this one has a lot of control over the look of the outlines and the highlights, and that can make for some really nice stylized art direction. I really like the example scene that they give you with the cups. You can see how nuanced the tune shading can be. One lighting specific asset that never gets enough mention is the Bakery GPU light mapper. Before the current progressive light mapper was available in Unity, there was the GPU Bakery light mapper. This is a PC only asset, sorry Mac users, but basically this lets you accelerate the light map baking process by harnessing your GPU. HDRI lighting, global illumination, this accelerates everything and gives you beautiful light maps. And though I don't have an RTX card yet in my PC, the developer says it can take advantage of Nvidia's new architecture. And there is a companion asset called the Bakery Real-Time Preview, and that can save you loads and loads of time as well. Seriously, light mapping shouldn't be as painful as it currently is, and Bakery helps you get through that baking process a lot faster. And it works well in production. If you've played Call of Duty Mobile, then you've probably seen it in action. As far as sounds go, the Ultimate Sound Effects Bundle has 8,000 plus sound effects that are professionally recorded. Everything from sci-fi weapons and doors to more Mario Brothers-esque audio clips. Sound is one of those things that we often take for granted during game development and we sort of shovel it off to the very end. But what a huge difference it makes to have professionally recorded sound effects. And of course, we can't mention games without talking about animation. Final IK is like one of the best known inverse kinematic solutions for Unity. It gives you a lot of flexibility with how to constrain your character skeletons in IK. The net result is that you can either drive or finesse your animation depending on what your goal is. If you need your character to adjust its feet to the ground or grip onto a specific transform in your scene, it can help with that. In addition, a lot of developers rely on Final IK to animate their characters procedurally. Notably, this fellow here, even though he wrote a lot of the procedural animation stuff himself, he's still using Final IK to drive the skeleton. Now, it's pretty cool what you can do with it once you put your mind to it. If you want more motion capture or hand animation, then I definitely recommend checking out Kubold's Animset Pro series. I have a number of them. They are a mix of motion capture and hand animation. He's an animator from Poland, and he has this whole series of animations for a humanoid with a pistol or a rifle, and some of them have motions for melee combat as well. So here's a set of animations that you could use for a fighting game. Now, while we're talking about fighting games, one last package I wanted to recommend is the Universal Fighting Engine 2 by Mind Studios. I grew up playing stuff like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, and it's great to see something like that for Unity. So here's a fan-made Star Wars lightsaber battle game using this asset. Now, even if you're not building a fighting game per se, I think this is a terrific asset to have, and you can learn a lot just by digging into how it's constructed. Okay, so basically that's my short list. There are plenty of others currently on sale. If you have a favorite and I haven't mentioned it, then please just leave a comment below. I'm always interested in hearing about what people are using and how these assets can speed up your workflow. Anyway, that's all I have for this episode. I still have some more Dots tutorials cooking up right now. Stay tuned for my next video where we hook up the player input to some systems and drive an entity around on screen. This will begin our dive into more gameplay-like use cases of ECS and Dots. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out those assets. Until next time, I'll see you in the game camp.